Hello, I'm Eric Snodgrass, and thank you for watching today's long-range forecast video brought to you by Nutrient Ag Solutions. This analysis is being provided for perspective only, and any decision made based upon this presentation is the sole responsibility of the person making the decision. Finally, please remember that all long-range weather forecasting is speculative by nature. Well, certainly the last uh, 24 hours here has been interesting. We've seen a powerful low-pressure system emerge in the central part of the United States, blanketing a big section of the central and northern part of the U.S. with snow and incredibly strong winds around this one. And then the second system is now pushing uh, very strongly through parts of Oregon and northern California. And that will be a system that will again emerge in the central plains, uh, putting snow even farther to the north as we work into this upcoming weekend. So at least want to start with a little bit of a rundown of what's going on in the near term here so we can see what to anticipate out of these next couple of systems. So this is where we put down the snow recently. Overall, very impressed with the model performance on snowfall amount and location here. Maybe I underestimated the power of this system, especially back in parts of Nebraska, where we were looking at primarily a three to six inch snowfall event. You can see some heavier bands in there, certainly piling it up. And as you get back over to the front range of the Rocky Mountains, uh, certainly some very heavy snowfall uh, in and around Denver and points to the, to the north of there, and especially in parts of Boulder. Out west, we're packing it up in the Sierra Nevada. We're not done just yet. We have more snow to be adding in that area. And we're going to talk about that in just a second here. But I at least have to show you something kind of entertaining and fun out of this. In Boulder, Colorado, this video kind of emerged thanks to Corey here for posting this one. You know, I guess this is how we get around when we pick up a foot of snow. Uh, and uh, so getting to work here on, uh, or maybe just having some fun here on the uh, on the on the skis as the snow is still piling up in this area. So anyways, let's get back to it here. All hazards weather map, just looking at what we're dealing with today. So we still have our winter storm warnings that are out in, in effect into this area and incredibly strong winds here. But again, with that low that's now digging down into this region and it's going to be slowly emerging here uh, out of the uh, out of the inner mountain west, uh, we're going to see these colorful maps continue to be quite colorful. Uh, and you can see all of the widespread winter storm advisories, winter storm watches, and winter storm warnings that are for the western part of the United States. But I want to show you how strong the winds have been here in parts of the Midwest. This is just a snapshot here right before lunchtime uh, here in the mid part of the country here of how strong some of these winds were. Uh, sustained 30 to 40 mile an hour winds. We've had gusts that have gotten as high as 70 miles an hour and uh, this is a very tightly wrapped low pressure system uh, and it is moving very quickly across uh, the Great Lakes states as we move through the middle part of the day today on Wednesday. Okay, so let's get into some of the details on uh, what we're anticipating here just in the next week or so, and we'll get out to the longer range and look at some of the bigger factors. So here's our two systems uh, early this morning on Wednesday. System number one here spinning over Wisconsin, very tight pressure gradient, incredibly fast winds, and system number two here coming into Northern California. As we play this forward, we're going to see system number one making its way to the northeast very quickly, such that by uh, 6 a.m. on uh, Thanksgiving, high pressure is built in behind it. You can see that in through here, and the first low is now moving on off the northeast. So this will be extremely windy conditions for the northeast travel uh, in the morning on Thanksgiving with snow here in the interior getting up into parts of uh, Maine. We'll take a look at what those snowfall totals look like in a moment. Meanwhile, our next low pressure system is now sitting down here just off the California coast, and we have an incredibly strong kind of moisture advecting out of the, the Pacific here coming across parts of Mexico and watch how this next system emerges here Thursday evening so that's where we are right here getting into Friday morning now into Friday afternoon and evening and into Saturday morning. Here's our next big low pressure system that emerges. Again, another massive wind maker in terms of having strong winds. Uh, coming out of the south initially here, but a lot of rain, maybe some severe thunderstorms here in the southern edge of this. But as this system moves through Saturday morning into Saturday afternoon, and Saturday evening. Now we're going to be putting down a bunch of snow from Montana and Wyoming across the north central plains over toward the Great Lakes states with heavy rain out ahead of this on the warm side of it. As it passes through on Sunday morning, so now you can see the lowest pushing through parts of Michigan, look at that rain snow line. It'll be a tough one to pin down exactly where that will be because we're still several days out from this one, but we're going to look right now across this area. And there will be a lot of very windy conditions. This is blizzard kind of winds here on the back side. And uh, as the snow comes around with the colder air, it could be coming through Nebraska and Iowa, maybe even clip parts of Illinois as it exits here on Sunday evening. So as you are trying to get home in the Midwest over toward the Northeast on Sunday during the day, uh, this is going to be producing a lot of incredibly windy conditions. Uh, and uh, you can see the precipitation patterns here. All right, this is a long range video, but we got to cover this important stuff in the near term first. But look at this. After that passes, really the main show goes back over to California. 
We have several days in the middle of next week where things across the rest of the country are relatively benign. I'm kind of rocking you back and forth here, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. we got to see what's punching in there in the Southern California, and does it, as the operational model runs suggest, stay to the south, or does it push back up into the central plains and into the Midwest? Certainly, we can see high pressure tends to dominate as we get through much of next week. So let's take a look at what that system looks like. First, snowfall through the next week. Remember, system number two that comes out here puts down a whole bunch of snow in the Sierra Nevada, puts a lot into the Intermountain West, uh, as you can see here, packing up the snow. Uh, and then as this emerges, uh, again, over the weekend, this is now Saturday morning through Sunday, we can see that we're going to be adding, now this is a total snowfall accumulations here through the next week. We're going to be putting down anywhere between 8 and 10, maybe maybe over a foot of snow in parts of the Dakotas and Minnesota. And what you see adding up right in through here, just remember this is from the current system leaving right now and the new system that's coming through. So very stormy and, excuse me, snowy in the north central part of the United States and in the Intermountain West as we progress through uh, the uh, next week or so. And as each of these systems kind of leaves here in parts of the northeast. You, it's going to be difficult to pin down that snow line here with system number two moving through, but certainly in the interior capable of picking up um, you know, several inches of snow as well. So that's your snowfall map getting out through the next week. Now coming back to California, we can see we actually set ourselves up with what we call an atmospheric river event. So this map is valid here Sunday around noon, and so we're going to watch a couple of days of pushing in a lobe of very high precipitable water that's going to hit Southern California. And again, that's coming through to start your new week. So Sunday morning through uh, early next week, Monday into Tuesday, very wet conditions again for California. So this is going to effectively end the fire season, uh, and this is uh, going to be piling up some snow in the, in the Sierra Nevada and bringing quite a bit of moisture here to Southern California as well. So putting it all together, just looking out here over the next week, these are precipitation anomaly maps from the European, which I have over here on the left, and the GFS on the right. And uh, we can see that both maps kind of pin down a very similar pattern. We have this two systems right now, then California getting hit with the, the big onshore flow event uh, early next week. And as all of these systems are currently forecast, at least the first two, to kind of lift toward the northeast, we are seeing the place that has the, the least probability of getting above average precipitation being down here in our southern region. Certainly not in the mid-south, but down there in and right on our Gulf Coast states and getting over to the Carolinas. Now, with the pattern as it is, the Pacific Northwest, while we do have precip coming through, is actually on the drier side of things as well. And as we discussed, a lot of this up here is going to be some very heavy snowfall. So that's looking at your next week. Let's now get into the long range and talk about week two. Something interesting I'm starting to note in week two, we do have some model differences. I kind of flipped these back around. I apologize. GFS is on the left and European ensembles on the right. But we're looking only at week two precipitation anomalies. Some agreement here about California and and our southern region. You can see both showing up wet on the models, but what is different here is kind of the play in the north central Pacific. Um, the GFS uh, is a little bit wetter than the European, although the differences are relatively subtle at this point. So we need to know what's driving this pattern uh, because it appears that we're getting into a region uh, or a time period, excuse me, where we're going to be seeing a much stronger subtropical branch of the jet stream. And that's why the southern tier of the United States is looking wet. Now, what this is doing is this is kind of uh, uh, reversing on a longer term trend that we have had. So from October 25th to November 25th, we've really seen the jet stream kind of favor something that looked a bit more like this, right? You've seen that quite a bit with the colder air kind of penetrating here into the north central part of the United States and spreading east as the jet stream splits around this large ridge that's been in the Gulf of Alaska. So that was what we had up until the most recent two big low pressure systems that have come out of the west. So that'll be the pattern against which we will compare things to. It has also looked like this. We're looking here at zonal winds in the jet stream. So in other words, zonal means west to east. And I'm looking for where they've been fast. And I kind of drew in here with uh, the, the, the black arrows what our flow pattern has looked like. So if we're going to see any significant change moving into December, it's going to have to disrupt that pattern that you see right here on this map, where our jet stream has been originating from. So this is what we're looking at. Getting out here into the middle part of December, uh, some of the things we're going to have to focus in on. 
does the pattern actually flatten out such that we get a stronger piece of the of the Pacific jet stream here, more zonal in nature? Do we start to bring that ridge instead of being out here in the Gulf of Alaska? Do the models have this right in such that we're going to be bringing it in into this region here? And does the subtropical jet actually get going and really cranking up? That is what the models are currently forecasting. Now this is a pattern across North America that does resist the extremes of temperatures, okay? So this is what I often call a more relaxed pattern, uh, but uh, we have a few wild cards in the mixture that we have to be discussing. Let me show you what I mean by relaxing this pattern. Here it is, very highly amplified, European right GFS ensemble on the left. What's that amplification? Well, you can see this, right? You can see it in both models. That's what's going to keep the northwest on the drier side and California on the wetter side in the near term. But watch what happens as we play this one forward. Our ensemble models are in very good agreement with the system that emerges in the middle part of the country here on a Sunday into Monday. And they both see this pattern setting up where, look, deep trough here over the east by the time we get into our new week and the trough off the west. The European is the one I'm focusing on over here on the right, but the GFS is the same thing. So this is when we get that big, uh, you know, precipitable water push, that high precipitable water push into California early next week. Now watch how things evolve from here. Tuesday into Wednesday, this is December 4th, December 5th. At this point, the models do diverge a little bit. You can see that overall they agree on a couple of things, but the European is favoring a deeper trough in this area, whereas the GFS wants to have the deeper trough here and also off the east coast of the United States over here. Now the significance of this is that the European, when this happens, is going to paint a warmer picture for this section of the United States, whereas the GFS is going to keep things slightly cooler overall. Now let me show you where the pattern goes from here. We see that as we get out to the 6th, 7th, and 8th, we do notice troughing west, broader ridging in the central part of the United States. And watch the difference here as we get out past day 10 and 11 and move you out toward, well, December 10th, 11th, and 12th. Now this is where the models really do break apart. You see the European model is wanting to kind of go back over into this pattern where we're going to be doing this. You just saw it a few moments ago. Strong subtropical branch coming in like this and both are rising in that direction. We've seen this pattern. This is a pattern uh, that is going to be featuring a stormier southern track like this. But the GFS has a s overall flatter pattern, but is trying to bring in a deeper feature over here. And that's the one I'm going to have to watch. And the reason why I'm watching it so carefully is I believe that this trough that you see here in the GFS, and it's kind of sitting out a little bit further uh, to the west here in the European, this might be connected to a polar vortex event that we have to be talking about here. So before I show you that temperature patterns in the next five days, here they are illustrated for you getting through Monday. Remember, why we're seeing the warmth, you know, kind of in this corridor here is because of the system that comes out over the weekend. Remember, it dives down like this and then emerges. So we're pulling up some warmth in this area. That's why you see that. Okay, after that system goes through, day 6 through 10 over here, you can see uh, the cooler weather pushing into the east, and that's as that broader trough establishes in this area. So pretty good model agreement. But I told you that things are trying to relax a bit as we get into the middle part of the month. And we've seen a model trend that suggests that this is kind of real. Uh, what I mean by that is that we, we could be moving ourselves over into a pattern that temporarily in the mid part of the month does have some slightly above average temperatures. Now remember, it's still December, so this isn't going to be warm, but it's just not the extreme cold that we've seen lately here at the end of the month of November. Okay. So what do I think is the biggest wild card in the longer range forecast? In other words, what do I think might be altering things as we get into mid-December? Well, it's shown to you over here on the right. What we're looking at is deep in the stratosphere. We're looking at differences from normal in terms of the height field. And the perturbation you see here is going to stretch and elongate the polar vortex like this. Now that configuration means cold Europe, cold Siberia, and then that cold likely has the potential for kind of coming around the bend like this and getting into North America, but maybe not till, I don't know, past mid-month. Last time we saw this was at the end of January of this past year. So look at the difference 
in that polar vortex disruption that happened just a few days before Super Bowl Sunday that brought the minus 80 degree wind chills to the north central plains. Well, the big height rises were here, north of Scandinavia, and therefore the vortex split happened on either side of it, here and here. What I'm seeing right now is the forecast may mean the split happens here and here, and that's a much different situation. That may allow for the mid part of the United States to see this more relaxed pattern that doesn't feature such extreme cold anomalies as we move ourselves toward the middle of the month of December, okay? So that's what my temperature outlook is really kind of looking at. What I do see though is that strong subtropical jet stream branch, which is why I think we don't really move over toward a truly dry pattern for the United States here as we move into the month of December, especially toward the southern part of the US. That's my longer term outlook for that. What's working against this? Well, we do know that the Indian Ocean Dipole has come off of its peak, but there's not much change in the tropics. What I mean by that is looking out here through the beginning of December, we still see in this corridor, sitting over this section of Africa, rising motion. And we see sitting over Australia, sinking motion. That's not going away. And these two features are trying to keep the Mad Julian Oscillation from getting out of phases one and two and start coming around like it normally does this time of year. So the tropics are still behaving in a very similar manner. It is the extra tropics in the stratosphere that are changing things up for our mid-December pattern. Let me continue on with this idea. The Indian Ocean Dipole event, even though it's come off peak, is still faking out our atmospheric circulation, making it look as though we have El Nino-like conditions. Remember, for the Southern Oscillation Index, if it's below negative eight, we're talking about El Nino-like behavior in the, in, the, in, the, in the atmosphere. And we're certainly seeing that right now. Yet, interestingly enough, our ocean temperatures in this corridor here have actually started to cool back off again, especially over here in Nino Region 3.4, which is this corridor. Now, let me just show you the other features I'm seeing. Still warmth here in the North Pacific. Still seeing the effect of the Indian Ocean Dipole. But, in the longer term, if we do allow the water temperatures to cool off in this area, because we are anticipating, I'm gonna put an X through it, we are anticipating the strong Indian Ocean Dipole to come off of its peak by the time we start the new year. This will be a critical pattern change for us as we begin our new year, such that for North America, we're gonna be in what I would call act two of winter. And for South America, things are gonna change up in the strength of position of their uh, monsoon. Now let's focus on South America here. You see over the next 15 days, Yep, we're still dry here, and it goes off the page, but very wet over in this part of Africa. We are still seeing our momentum transport going north into these branches like this, okay? We can see that. But what about South America? Because over the next 15 days, we are seeing that there is the potential for drier than average conditions here while things get very wet right in through this corridor. Now that's hitting Mato Grosso do Sol, that's hitting Southern Minas Gerais, this is hitting parts of Goiás, and that has been an area that over the last month has been drier than average. See, and I'm kind of circling it over there. So that is an important forecast feature because at the same time that this region's getting wet as the monsoon comes around like this, we do have a big push at some drier air coming in with a trough in this direction. That's why we see drier conditions in through here. So it's gonna focus a lot of our rainfall into this na very narrow corridor hitting Mato Grosso do Sol. Again, a region that's been relatively dry as of late. Now here's my longer term story for South America. When we get rid of the Indian Ocean Dipole dominating the tropics, if the water temperatures begin to cool off the west coast of South America again, therefore kind of looking maybe even a bit La Nina-like, well, that is going to upset this overall flow pattern. And what I mean here is that we're gonna watch January specifically in Brazil for possibly having some disruptive weather patterns that could go back over toward, I think at this point, maybe a drier pattern. So we're gonna have to watch this one very carefully because the crash of the Indian Ocean Dipole is gonna be critical to setting up both North and South American weather patterns. At this point, you notice I am not much more comfortable taking you out beyond two weeks, maybe even three weeks, telling what the pattern's doing. A lot of things are in, in a flux right now, they're changing. But let's watch it together. I'll keep you updated in every video that we produce. And I hope you all have a great Thanksgiving holiday here in the US, despite all the travel headaches that we will be experiencing. So we'll stop it right there. Thank you for watching. Talk to you again soon.